Now, if you have more than two solar panels, you got to make a decision whether to connect them in series or in parallel. And there are a couple of factors you should consider. So let's look into those. So of course, the size of your solar system and the voltage of your battery and, and consumption and all that is a factor. But let's just look at a small system like mine here. So I have two LG 405s here. So they are 405 watts each. And I have them connected in series. So the negative out of one panel goes into the positive out of the next panel. And then it goes underground to my cabin. And the reason I'm having these wired in series and not in parallel is because I have about 60 feet from my solar panels to my cabin. So that's quite a, a long distance. And I'm running 10 gauge wire. And 10 gauge wire at 60 feet is about good to about 20 amps. And then you have about a 10% voltage drop. So the reason I'm running higher voltage and lower amperage is I'm able to run 10 gauge wire, which is relatively economical at a fairly long distance of 60 feet to my cabin and then go into my charge controller. Yeah, here you can see some of the distance I'm going and uh, it's coming out of the ground right here. It goes into the electrical box and then it goes with flexible conduit underneath the cabin and uh, into my charge controller. Yeah, inside the cabin, the wires come up and go into this cubby here. So on the far left side, you see my Victron charge controller and I just upgraded it to 150 volt PV voltage and 60 amp battery charging current. And then it goes onto a bus bar system and from there it goes into my inverter and this is a multi plus two. It's a 12 volt, 3000 watt inverter from Victron. And of course, everything is uh, capped with my Nissan Leaf lithium cobalt manganese oxide battery that is recycled. And I buy these from Battery Hookup. And I got links in the description for you. I have two BMSs on it one is 200 amps, and the other one is a 60 amp BMS. So these panels deliver 49.4 volts each and 10.51 amps. Yeah, so let's say you have two panels at 12 volts, 5 amps each, and you want to wire them together. So let's look at a couple of examples here. So on the left hand side here, in Sirius, you would take the positive of one panel and run it to your charge controller, right? So that's a positive. And then you would take the negative of the first panel and connect it to the positive of the second panel. It goes through the panel. And then the negative of the second panel becomes your main negative and then that would go to the charge controller. So 12 volts plus 12 volts is 24 volts and you would still keep 5 amps, right? 120 watts. So that's one approach where you have higher voltage and, and lower current in this case. The second way you can wire these together would be in parallel where you take both positives and connect them together and both negatives and connect them together. You, you would keep your 12 volts but you would have five amps plus five amps, you, you would have a 10 amp current. So let's say you have three 200 watt panels. Uh, today they are considered you know, outdated uh, because they are a, a lot better panels on the market right now. But let's say you have three of them laying around and, and you wanna wire them up and you wanna wire them in series here. So each panel has 25 volts open circuit voltage and eight amps of current. So over here again, you know, the one of the positives goes to your charge controller as the main positive, and then the negative of the first panel goes to the positive of the second one, goes through the panel, comes out the negative of the second panel, goes into the positive of the third panel, goes through the panel, and then it comes out as, as a main negative. So in this case, you would triple your voltage. So you would have 75 volts, still eight amps, you know, that because that doesn't change, and that would result in about uh, 600 watts here. In another example here, so you have the same panels and you decide you, you, know, you want to wire them in, in parallel rather than in series, you would end up with 25 volts because you're connecting all the positives together. You need one of these adapters here and they come in two and three and you know up to, I think up to eight or 10 or, or how, however many. And uh, you, know, you can connect up your panels, panels that way. 
you would keep the voltage relatively low at 25 volts open circuit voltage and you would triple your amperage at 24 amps now that can become a problem because 24 amps you you need uh, you, you need something larger than 10 gauge wire if, if you run any distance and that gets expensive really quick here's something else i want to show you and this comes from the victron energy website and uh, here's another big advantage of wiring panels in series versus in parallel and in this case you have two different size panels you have a 100 watt panel it has 20 volts and 5 amps okay little one and you have a 130 watt panel 24 volts and 5.4 amps so if you wire them in series like right here you would add up your voltage you know 20 volts plus 24 volts would give you 44 volts uh, the amperage, however, uh, would be limited by, by the smaller panel. This, you would get 5 amps out of it. So this would result, you know, 44 times 5 is 220. So you would have 220 watts of solar power, you know, going, going into this charge controller here. On the other hand, if you decide to wire the negatives together and the positives together, so you just wire them in, in parallel here, uh, you would only get 20 volts. Right, so you would get you know the lower value of the two panels, and you would add up your five amps plus five point four amps is ten point four amps. Okay, so twenty times ten point four is two hundred and eight watts. And again, you have to deal with ten amps versus five amps. And in general, I like to stay with higher voltages and lower amperage because I can run much thinner wire and my losses are significantly less. So I'm on the Victron Energy website here and I want to show you some of the charge controllers uh, that they have to offer. And uh, on the very low end side, on the, on the small side here, you have the all of my MPPT, uh, maximum power point tracking. So this is limited to 75 volts uh, PV input and a charging current of 15 amps coming out of this charge controller, okay? And this charge controller is good for 12 volts, 24 volts, or 48 volts, okay? So if you have a higher PV voltage going in, you would go, you know, to the, the, the next level up, uh, 100 volt PV input voltage maximum, and they mean it. I mean, you cannot even be one volt above 100 volts here. Uh, I, I got burned. Uh, actually, my, mine tripped at 99.2 volts. It, it threw a fault. So, But this would be for 100 volt PV input and 50 amp charge current going into the battery. And this is good for 12 volt and 24 volts. And then it gets uh, quite large and quite expensive as soon as you reach the 150 volt PV input. Uh, and, and they make these in, in 35 you know, 45 and 70 um, amps. Uh, they, they, they go and they get expensive real quick. Uh, but again, you can probably put three large panels in series, so that would give you about 140 volts. But again, you, you cannot be even one volt over 150, it'll throw a fault right away. And then the charge current can be 35 amps, but it goes up to 48 volts. Right? So you can put quite large batteries and as your system grows, you would use, of course, higher voltages. So I hope this was helpful to you to decide whether to wire your panels in series or in parallel. And I'll leave all the links in the description for you. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.